Hey everyone, this season has been a bad one for mages. Ever since the item rework, mages haven't been too great in mid lane, and the role has been filled with obnoxious overtuned melee champions like Lee Sin, Silas, Viego, Katarina, etc. I'm sure we all have been slammed in lane at least once by one of these champions this season. So today, we're going to watch how the man himself, Dopa, smashes a Katarina in lane with Orianna. He gets no jungle help at all, and makes Katarina look weak. But even if you don't play Orianna, the concepts will apply to a lot of champions, and by the end of the video, you won't be scared of Katarina in lane anymore. So let's not waste any more time and jump right in. As laning starts, Dopa is going to start applying the pressure right away. It's a range versus melee matchup, so he can bully her if done right. Of course, Dopa is going to do this right though, so let's check this out. He walks up here to Cat before the first three melees are low. He throws Q, but does not auto attack because if he did, he would take way too much damage from the minions. This gets some damage on Cat while also proccing his mana flow right away, and that's something he will be aiming to proc every time it's up. Now, this seemed like a simple play, right? But when reviewing gameplay at the top level, you need to be thinking about why each player does what they do. It sounds obvious, but for example, after watching what Dopa just did, you should be wondering, but what about Katarina's Q? Couldn't she just throw it at him, or throw it and hit the minions behind him as well? Well, let's watch it again. When Dopa first walks up, the minions behind him aren't low enough for Katarina to get the last hits. So if she throws it here, she won't be able to get those first three minions, and that will be easily worth the damage Dopa takes from her Q. So this is what I meant by putting on the pressure. Instead of just sitting back and doing nothing at level 1, he's hitting her with a Q and walking up into her face even though he doesn't plan on auto attacking. It forces her to make a choice though, and if she made the wrong one, she would miss 3 CS. Anyways, after that, Dopa needs to back up and collect his first 3 CS, which lets Katarina use her Q and grab 2 of them as well. Now you should be wondering, why isn't Dopa auto attacking minions or doing anything? In low elo, you guys autopilot and will constantly auto the wave for no reason. The reason he's not hitting the wave at all is because of how he wants to control the wave for this matchup. It's a standard game plan used in most ranged melee matchups. He wants to stack up the waves by slow pushing, which is just last hitting the minions as the wave pushes. The goal is to stack up at least 3 waves, which means he can't be auto attacking too much. Then he will crash the waves on the tower and harass Katarina whenever she tries to get CS. So he's going to last hit, then once he has no CS to grab, he looks to proc mana flow and poke Katarina again, but she reads it and dodges it. Now watch this next little exchange which is just an example of the small things constantly happening in high elo laning. So Dopa just threw his Q and tried to hit Katarina. His Q will be down and hers will be up. He doesn't want to get hit by her Q though, so he backs up a little bit first, just barely staying out of range of it. This is called tethering. But by the way she's moving, it's obvious she's looking to use Q to grab minions. So as soon as she's in animation of her Q, he can turn and auto attack her because of the perfect spacing or tethering. Like I said, this is happening constantly in high elo laning from both players. It's a skill that takes a very long time to get good at, and you have to know the range of almost every ability. Anyways, after that, Dopa's jungler, Shaco, is getting invaded as red buff, and Dopa just hit level 2. Let's see what you would do here though. He has the level advantage on Katarina, so this could potentially be a 2v1 play if him and Shaco can kill the invading Viego. Would you leave lane to help the Shaco here? Let's see what Dopa does. So Dopa started to move over, but once he saw his jungler back off from the 1v1, he immediately wards raptors and heads back to mid. If he was going to join the fight, it would have to be very fast as his wave is pushing to cat, so he would miss a lot of CS if he took too long. But when Shaco backs off the 1v1, there's no reason to keep moving, and the ward he puts at raptors is important because Viego is going to exit the jungle from here. If he's pushing to cat without vision, Viego can easily gank him from behind. Anyways, on the way back to mid, we have our first situation where most players would get too scared to trade with cat here. I coach a lot of players in the gold and plat area, and almost every single one of them is way too scared of Katarina when laning against her. Dopa knows he doesn't need to be afraid of her here at level 2, as he can just run directly at her. If she throws Q, he will just keep running straight, and he won't get hit by the dagger if she tries to jump to it. Katarina knows this as well, so she just jumps away. The next thing you want to take note of here is how Dopa's positioning in the lane changes completely from the first 30 seconds. This is a general concept for mid that applies to every champion in every game. Viego is seen on the ward he placed earlier at Raptors, so he wants to hug the opposite side of the lane. If Viego tries to gank, he can just run out top side through river. Other than that, he's still working on the same game plan, slow pushing the wave to stack up a bunch of minions by last hitting. If you're watching this on your own, there's a lot of things you wouldn't catch if you don't know the concept. But don't worry, that's what I'm here for. Just like the tethering from before, this next part is another small thing that you just wouldn't notice. Do you see this blue minion leading the charge here? Isolated and is inevitably gonna die from the incoming wave? Both players are looking at that minion and quickly thinking about what they will do about it. Katarina is debating on whether or not she can contest it, and Dopa is thinking about if he can deny it or punish for it. Let's test your knowledge. Do you think Dopa can punish or deny this last hit?
So if we watch what happens, Dopa can't walk up any further than this because the three red minions in the back have not aggroed the blue wave yet. So if he walked up to try and poke Katarina, those three red minions and even the cannon, if he walked up too early, would have hit him and he would take a lot of unnecessary damage. And once those minions finally have a target, Katarina has already used Q and is out of range to poke. So they both were aware of what was happening. So like I said, these small things are constantly happening throughout a laning phase in high elo, and it can be hard to spot them unless you are really thinking about why each player is doing what they're doing. Moving on, Dopa is going to grab some last hits while this wave starts to really build up now on the third one like we talked about. Then we can see another blue minion starting to get low. We're back in the same situation as before, with both players asking themselves the same questions. Can I contest? And can I punish? This time, Katarina doesn't have Q for another second, and if she walks up for that minion to just melee it, she will take an insane amount of damage from Dopa, so she has to let it go. In low elo, they'll walk up for that minion all the time, and they won't get punished for it, and that's why they'll do it. You can easily abuse this to win lane every game just by punishing when they go for last hits that they can't go for. After that, Dopa has to collect a few more last hits and just barely misses the cannon. But the next wave arrives, which means his next wave is also on the way, which is going to stack up to be a huge blue wave to crash on the tower after this. The wave is going to crash now, and if you notice, Dopa is back to play on the bot side of the lane. He knows the enemy jungler, Viego, invaded Shaco's red and only had blue buff, so now Viego will have to clear his own top side. Then, as Dopa finishes up grabbing these minions, Katarina goes for a small trade here. Dopa could try and use Q on her for poke, but he cares more about getting these last hits, so he shields the Katarina damage and gets the CS. Now the wave is fully crashed on the tower, so he's looking to harass Kat as much as possible, but safely. He knows she just used her W when trading with him, so she has no kill pressure. This lets him auto attack, use W, and look for a Q as well to get some poke off. After using all of his abilities, the wave is nearly dead, so it's time to back off. Especially since Viego could be looking to gang from topside now. Dopa doesn't have a ward though, so watch what he does. He walks at the brush, which would make Viego start channeling his stun if he was in there, but then Dopa immediately turns around. He was baiting the stun out if Viego was actually sitting in there, but figured if he didn't use it there, he must not be in the brush. So he moves over, looking to help Shaco with Scuttle, I believe, but Viego comes around the corner and lands his stun. He doesn't want to fight this 2v2 as Cat and Viego would be much stronger early on, so he just backs off and he heads back to lane. Then we're gonna have our first big punish from Dopa coming up. So we can see these blue minions are low and Cat will want to grab them. Dopa can't just run up at her right now as she has four minions there, but she's gonna make a really greedy play and use E like this. Now, I honestly don't give a if you say, well, I would punish here too, or something like that. Because like I said, I currently coach and have coached a lot of players in plat and gold, and almost every single one would let this Katarina use E like that and just walk away. If Kat is using E like that, she's not hitting a dagger, so her E will go on full cooldown, meaning she has no counterplay here if Dopa goes in. Obviously, Dopa knows this, and that's why it's a really disrespectful play from the Kat. So, Dopa goes in, and uses his shield to block the minion damage, and gets a huge chunk of Kat's health. Now, Kat has TP and Ignite with no flash, and the wave is pushing to Dopa. It's basically frozen at the moment. So if Kat recalled, the red minions would kill the blue minions and deny her a ton of CS. She would be forced to TP back to lane. This is important because after that last chunk, Kat needs to decide if she wants to use her TP now, which wouldn't be optimal of course. She wants to save it to TP to a side lane and get free kills. But let's see what happens. Dopa is going to last hit and keep the wave frozen, and Kat appears back in lane as she didn't recall. Dopa notices her walk away from the wave and wants to stop her recall if he can, so he walks up like this. Then, as the cannon starts to get low for Cat, Dopa hits her with a Q and E and some autos before backing off to drop minion aggro. He doesn't back off because he's afraid of Cat though, he's just thinking way ahead. In his mind, Katarina is going to recall and TP back to lane with how low she is. So he's going to poke her a bit and punish for the cannon, but he's not going to keep hitting her and let her minions trade back a bunch of damage because he can't actually kill her right now. If that happens, when she TPs back in, he will be too low to contest the wave, which will let her shove and roam while he recalls and TPs in as well or farms the wave. Now, this is where things get tricky as a high elo player, as you really have to know your limits. Katarina is obviously in a bad spot, and most low elo players will be thinking, well, can't she just recall and TP back in? It's because to get to a level like Korean Challenger or high elo in general, you learn to really push your limits and try to play as optimal as possible. Like I said earlier, Kat doesn't want to have to recall and waste TP to get back to lane. She's close to level 5, so in her mind, she might be able to use that level up and her wave to bully Dopa off the wave so she can crash it. If Dopa tries to fight, Cat thinks she can potentially turn it with the minions and her combat summoner spell advantage, which is Ignite. Now, Dopa knows this though, so he's going to be constantly auto attacking the wave here. This is called thinning, basically just killing minions to trim down this big wave so it's not as big. He wants to keep the wave frozen, which only needs 4 more minions on the red side than the blue side. Katarina walks up and uses Q here to grab these minions just like before, and she hits level 5. 
Dopa punishes just like last time, but this time he uses W for the extra damage. Last time he didn't because of the high mana cost, but now Katarina is playing a dangerous game, so all the damage he can get will be valuable if she continues to overstay. Dopa continues to need the wave out, and we can see the red wave has 4 and his wave has 1, and that one minion will die soon, so it's perfect. Katarina still isn't recalled though, and has actually regened a lot of health, so let's see what happens. Kat thinks that she has enough health and a big enough wave to go for the high risk high reward play now. Jump in, use everything to clear the wave, and hope Dopa will be too afraid of the minions to hard punish so she can crash the wave and recall, or maybe she can use the minions to turn the fight. Dopa goes all in here though, very confident that he will win. Kat tries to jump to Dopa to dodge his Q and W, but she does it a bit late and still gets hit. Then Dopa does something that I'm not entirely sure if he did on purpose, but I've reviewed a lot of Dopa gameplay, and almost every time I learn something and think, did he do that on purpose? because it seems that'd be just too crazy. Most of the time, he does because I would see him do the same thing in other games. But if he did it on purpose or not is irrelevant. You can still use this little trick if you go against a Katarina. He runs this way and puts his back to this wall. So when Katarina uses Q, it actually goes behind the wall, so she can't just walk up and get it. She has to go all the way around. But by the time she reaches it, Doba finishes her with one last auto attack. All right guys, so this was some very high level laning from both players, despite how it may seem from the greedy Katarina plays. She really only made one or two mistakes, but Dopa punished really hard and put her in a tough position. And a lot of these concepts you can apply to your own games. In your games, players are playing properly about 1% of the time. So you have way more opportunities than this to punish them. All right guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about Skillcat. So we offer a five division rank up guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well in fact that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 629 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $4.99 a month if you're serious about improving. But that's going to bring us to the end of this video. I hope you learned from this and enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.